And then Jacob is uh, with us today. Holly's going to give the opening prayer. James is doing our doctoral mass degree. Um, and then Kaylee is going to render prayer at the end. Any announcements today? Is basketball game today? Five and seven? Yeah. Uh, and then again on Friday, there's basketball game. Oh, and wrestling on Wednesday. The journal question is, what is the Lord trying to teach me right now in my life? Who's on deck? Addy, you already gave me your personal favorite one. That's all I got. Okay. Tomorrow, class is 7.50 to 9.50. No seminary Thursday and Friday. Probably all know that already. We get up today at 10.35. We're just having like a party tomorrow. A two hour party tomorrow? Yeah. No. Could we, could we do a lesson and maybe have time to study for a final? Yeah. I'll say about that. Asking you shall receive. Wait, Bertie, did you do the English one? No, you haven't managed your time. <laughs> Okay, and the good thought for today, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Good. Other announcements? Hey, Anderson. Jacob. Yeah. Let there be music. Oh. Mm -hmm. 30. Mm -hmm. Come, come you saints. We sing in this? Okay. You're the boss. Just play it. Play it? Yeah. Water. Okay. Yeah. Our voices are cold. Our voices are cold. Come and warm up. Uh, who did what, Mr. Guy? I mean, uh, so did you do what must be done to get the paint thing out of there? This one's looking really dry. It's gone from being too wet to now going dry. Did you get some good water? You can sprinkle the top. Oh, did you get down a little bit? Like with this one. Okay. Um, doctrinal mastery. James. Everybody pull out your little uh, your scriptures and your bookmark too. I'm gonna have you use your bookmark a little bit. So. Okay, James, where are we at? I chose John 17. Okay. 
Anybody there? Getting there? What was it? What was it? I found out. John 17, 3. This is the first time this one will have been shared, I think. So mark it, highlight it in your digital scriptures. Okay. Yeah. And um, that is, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So um, I think it's very important to get on a personal level with Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father because they are very good sources and um, we can have eternal life if we know them in the name of Jesus Christ amen. amen how do we get on a personal level I think we talk to them a lot and we just explain what's happening in our lives it's pretty personal that's great can't listen to very well if we don't have a conversation with them once in a while Thank you. John 17, 3. Eternal life, description, definition of eternal life. All right. Jacob. Okay, so, like, last week, like, kind of, you asked me, like, how I was doing, like, and how basketball was, and I said that it sucked. Um, and then you were like, you were asking me then why do it, but so I had to finish the season. So I decided to like actually try and practice, and I did good. So he said, if I keep up, then I'll get more playing time. So it might actually turn out to be okay. Oh. Cool. So when did that shift? I started to practice harder or try more. When did you do that? After you told me. Oh, it was just last, this last yeah, week. Yeah, because you said, why do it if there's no reason to do it? So. so so then putting in more effort, your coach is like, well, then this might get you some work. Okay. That's great. So what kind of, what can we apply from that? Thank you, Jacob. What is the what is the life lesson? What's the moral of the story? You get in what you put out. Okay. I mean, you get out what you put in. You know, like, yeah. Stay good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Listen to your elders. Your elders. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a good conversation we we're having because you know I was just like, "How's it going?" And it's like, "Well, it's not awesome. <laughs> not really having a good time." And it, it is it is really really difficult to keep putting effort into something that you don't feel like you're getting something out of. That's just the human condition, right? Who wants to keep trying if there's no reward? Who wants to sacrifice if there's no, no blessing? Uh, so I wouldn't. So if, if you're putting effort in, if you're putting pennies in that piggy bank and you don't think you'll ever get them back, what's the point? You'd want to keep them, right? So, um, I think, does it feel like that sometimes with the gospel? Perhaps. A lot of people can see, especially when we're young, well, the only things, what, what the gospel like takes away from us, right? It's like, here's the gospel. And it, it's either it's either taking or it's giving. And when we're young, it's pretty easy to sometimes see all the things that we're giving up, all the things we're sacrificing, that things we can't do, things we shouldn't do, things we're not allowed to do, um, the time that it takes, the energy, all that stuff. And it's harder to focus on this, but that's not a fault of, I wouldn't say that's like, I'm not getting down on anybody for that. So that's totally normal. Why would that be the case?
What does it take to figure this part out? When do you start to get to see what the gospel gives instead of just what the gospel takes? Grant. You mean like where it goes in a way? Like find out what it is if you don't start like actually doing it. You can't just like assume it gives you nothing if you haven't done it. And then like because yeah, you'll you're not gonna get anything if you're not doing it. So like the way to figure that out is like just do it. Like, uh, I forget, <clears throat> like, it was in a talk, I don't know if it was in, like, a general conference or, like, at church, but they were saying how, like, even if you don't fully understand the stuff, like, it's not always your, your job to understand why you're supposed to do something, but if you just do it, then you'll understand, like, the importance of it. That's really good. You're not going to, the, 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 the angel, the spirit, the gospel, it doesn't always tell you, give you the why in a moment. It just gives you the what. It gives you the when. The when is always now. And it gives you the what. The action to take. It doesn't hardly ever tell you why you're going to do it. That's great. So I'd love, so if, we, if I can take from that, to get to, to move from what does the gospel take from me to what does the gospel give me, I think you said it requires experience. We have to do this in order to get to that. We have to do the giving we have to do the giving before we get to do the taking. <laughs> it's a paradox in that way. So we have to sacrifice to get the blessings. Look on your um, chart, your uh, doctrinal mastery chart. There's a scripture, and a really good scripture, that where Jesus is trying to teach this same doctrine. See so if you can scan through that and find one that helps us with that. And also other scriptures that might come to mind that tell us that it's faith that moves us from here to here. And because you guys are young, you don't have a, a whole lot of like, so there's been so much of, this is the culture of our family, this is what I've been taught, this is the social experience I've been given as being a member of the church. So there's been a lot of you perhaps not choosing all on your own to do, to do the gospel living. It's been a group effort, right? There's a lot of group effort involved. And so because there hasn't been a lot of personal, perhaps, like I'm talking about I don't know, hundreds and thousands of experiences of the giving before you get to get the takings, of the, the receiving sometimes. So it's just a lack of experience that would make us stay stuck here. So that's okay why young people sometimes just see it this way. Not so much over here, because you're, you're still young. You still don't have a whole lot of, of a catalog of a bunch of life experiences that show you that this is really where it's at and not over here. Did you find a scripture on your bookmark that is helpful? Give, yes. John 7, 17. Okay, great. What does it say? Um, That's what I was thinking of. If any man will do his will, he shall, do, he shall know of his doctrine. Okay, let's go there. John 7, 17. It's just one page over from where we were. No, a couple pages back. John 7, 17. Let's turn there and let's mark it while we're at it. This is one of my favorite scriptures because it's just so powerful. <coughs> Let's start in 16 and then 17. Who's got that besides Jake? John 7, 16 and 17. Holly, would you read 16 and Charlie read 17? Yeah. Says, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Isn't that so powerful? Can we say how would you say that in your own words? Rephrase that verse 17 in your own in your own language. Grant already sort of did. 
You try to put it in your own words. I'm going to call on somebody. Rephrase it in your own words. If you were telling a friend the same doctrine that Jesus is teaching, how would you say it? Jacob, give it a shot. How would you rephrase that? Verse 17. In your own words. John 17, 17? 7, 17. 7, 17. Okay. Well, I was looking it up. Any of us want to give it a shot? How would you say that in your own words? And conversely, if you don't do what he says, you won't have knowledge. then you won't get it. I mean it. Pretty much like you said, I think. Yeah. You say it in your own words. Um, so like, it says that if you do his will, um, that you shall know that you know for yourself that it's true, whatever it is that um, God's will is. And just like being willing to do whatever he wants you to do. Know that what he's saying is right yeah, because here's this rogue preacher, this guy from nowhere, who's coming up and just trying to upset the entire religion. And he's calling all the church leaders out on all their hypocrisy and all their fake religion and all their um, power hungry moves, you know, and he's like, so he's basically tearing down the current um, religious culture in a way. And people are like, who are you and where did you come from and what are you talking about? And he's saying, this isn't my idea. And if you want to know if what I'm saying is from God, what do you need to do? What do you have to do to know if the gospel is true? What do you have to do to know if all the things that the gospel asks of you is worth it? If, if there really are blessings from it, what do you have to do? You just have to do it. Right. You don't have to believe it before you do it. That's the amazing thing. It's so awesome to know I don't have to believe. I don't have to have a testimony before I do it. I just need to do it. I just need to do it willingly with my heart in it. And then when I do, Jesus is saying, then you'll know. So, in that way, from what Jacob is saying here, I was kind of, let's say, let's say maybe you were sort of going through the motions of like going to practice and stuff, but something changed and you started maybe giving a little more, choosing to do, to do it. And then as you do that, you get more out of it. So, let's not forget, don't, don't worry if you have doubts, don't worry if you're not all the way sure, don't worry about any of that. You just do it. You just, just go for it, really. Live it, and then you'll get it. So if that takes faith. It takes putting what you've been taught into practice. You have to. Is there another scripture that comes to mind for anybody in the Book of Mormon that talks about you have to do this before you get this? You have to make the sacrifice before you get the blessing. You have to give up something to get something. Does anything come to mind? You receive no witness until after. There you go. Yeah. So sometimes these phrases are helpful. You know the scriptures. We may not know where they're found, but you know the doctrines, and that's what's important. Because you can always look up keywords if you need to to get the reference. You get no witness until after the trial of your faith. If anybody is in here struggling a little bit, like, well, where are the blessings? Where's all the help? Where's all the whatever the gospel promises? I'm not really seeing it. You just stick with it. You'll, it'll, you'll get there, I promise. Thank you for that. Um, 
Okay, so there are two doctrinal masteries there. We don't have a lot of time. It's a short day. Um, turn to your neighbor and answer this question. What is the Lord trying to teach me right now in my life? Okay, you've got church curriculum. You've got seminary curriculum. You've got what's happening in school. But you also have God who is constantly and continually tutoring you, tutoring you through the circumstances of your lives. Like we've been reading about Zachariah and Elizabeth and Mary and Joseph. There is a plan that's happening in their lives that they don't quite know it yet. So I want you to sort of take a second and be like, what am I experiencing and what is God trying to show me? What is God trying to teach me here in the circumstance of my life? Or maybe you keep getting a, some kind of an impression uh, that's coming to you. I don't know. But I want you to think about that. And if you can, try to answer it to your neighbor back and forth. What is God trying to teach you right now in your life? You guys go here. You share. Just take just take a minute here. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, to, um, and right now I also want you to pull out your your um, bookmark, and I want you to pick three scriptures that you're going to actually memorize. And tomorrow I'm going to give you a little time to memorize those word for word. So you might pick short ones or long ones, and again, we only have like two or three minutes left here. But I want you to identify the three you want to work on. Maybe you pick the three shortest. Maybe you pick three that seem like they're the most important for you right now to know. 
Maybe you think they'll be the three most important for when you're a missionary. I really want to know these, but pick three. I don't know. I guess we don't have a marker. I could have you put a little dot by the three that you want to. But I don't think we have time to pass around a marker and do that. Pick the three you want, and tomorrow I'm going to give you a little bit of time to work on memorizing those three. Okay? Some of them are short. This one, I mean, you could do this one in about two minutes that we just read. 717. Thanks for being here. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, bright and early. Looking forward to it. And uh, leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Did you want to go from Sunday and say it and because of school we have um, um, a safe walk back to the building or the drive and then we just like that? Amen. Thank you.